The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. This is the early edition. This is 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, the 19th. And it's my pleasure to be here. This will be uh, replayed again at 10 o'clock. So that's always a little difficult to do when you've got a volatile day like this, potentially. Uh, right now, we're looking, certainly the Dow closed at a sell signal yesterday. It's not the, it's the only index, key index, that actually went to a sell signal. Very near term, that is. Not a sell mode yet, just a sell signal. Closed at 33,296. And the YM, which is the Dow Futures, is down very sharply, almost at the 200 period moving average of 33,100. Uh, oh, that's where it is right now. 33,036 uh, is the uh, 200 period exponential moving average. It was fantastic support for the last, uh, ever since the low that was made on December the 20th. So we're going to be watching this very closely. I need to put that, not a plus sign, but a down arrow. That's a sell signal right there, very close to a sell mode, actually. Looking at the uh, S&P, the S&P cash yesterday closed at 39.28 at a peak D, underneath the 200 period moving average. When you go to the continuous contract of the E-mini, trading down 34, 39.11, you can see how it was repelled right at the 200 period moving average. It's now under the 14 period moving average, very close to a sell signal. Uh, and that inside track has gone back into the inside track of the weekly chart. Well, this is going to be a very interesting session. We're looking here, and that's the reason why we got out of some of our trading position in the Dow. But right now, what we're looking at is the QQQ, which closed at, that's the NDX 100, Invesco QQ Trust Series tra uh, closed at uh, minus 253 at 275 yesterday. And the NQ right now is trading quite sharply low. It's down 109 at 11,365. I'm um, going to be watching this very closely because it needs to hold the 11,200s over the next two days. The IWM was uh, doing very nicely. Pull back sharply from the peak, uh, making a leg C, and now it could be a peak C today, down $1.70 at 182. Um, it has 183.80 as resistance and must hold 182.40 support. Gold is still holding very well, up 2.4 at 1909. Did make a peak E. It's right in the area that I consider to be strong resistance. How does it hold that? It's leg C in the weekly chart. Looking at the dollar, tries to, each time it's tried to rally, it's failed. Today it's down 21 ticks at 102.19. It's got a little rectangle formation. It needs to get to 103.50 to be able to say it's going to impact the, the gold and the markets. But if it holds down here, we could, we could see a bit of a bounce today in the market. We'll see what happens. And the TLT has been a tell for some time now because it's been rallying strongly, meaning the yields are coming down. Today's down 79 cents at 107.84. It, uh, it's doing very nicely, actually, uh, in terms of the rebound. And the final thing here will be uh, crude oil. Crude oil is at 79.60, down 20 cents, at a leg D, right under the 200 period moving average. It's just kind of stalling in this rectangle formation. So I'll be back for my show, the Tiger Tech. Oh, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour. I thought I was doing the update. I thought that yesterday as well, a little confused with this early morning uh, opening. Okay, so we can now we can do a lot of things. What I want you to do is I just want to go through a couple of questions that I had. Um, Michael wanted to know about Moderna. I got that yesterday, I just like I didn't get to it in my show because I only saw it as I was about to wrap up in the early edition. This is a pattern that we look at. It's a very, it's the wide rectangle formation that forms some kind of a U pattern that is uh, going from one point down, curving around like a boat hull, and then it starts to move to the upside. Trading right now, pre market down $1.52 at $195.50. I think Moderna is holding very well, unlike many of the other areas of the healthcare, which let's call it the pharmaceuticals. I think they're in for a bit of a slide right now, and healthcare itself. So Moderna, uh, Biotech, COVID, they, they were very involved in COVID, but they had 
many other trials, and I've been speaking about this for quite some time, that Moderna is a different company. It's not one of those flash in the pan um, uh, COVID related like Zoom that had the spectacular rally during Zoom. They have products, they have real products, the products that will come to market at some point. So the question was that he's been a long-term buy and hold, he's added to the position. I like that, Michael. And if you have, uh, if you have goals for Moderna, it doesn't even necessarily have to be price because it's gone from 497, it only lost 400 points, it's down at 197 right now. But if you're looking at this, uh, 300 points that is, if you're looking at this as as a, a potential consumer product that's always going to be in demand and it rotates through its various uh, FDA approvals, etc. I think that this is something that you've got to be, you've got to be able to sit with it as it comes down and goes up and comes down. But as a longer term, higher lows and higher highs potential, I think this fits the category exactly the way you were talking about it. I would not recommend doing anything. You're in this new position. I think it will make that leg D above the uh, peak C that was made back the week of, was that uh, November? No, December the 16th. At 217.25, it made a peak C. I think it will go to 217.26 to start leg D, and then we'll see if it can go higher than that because it's got that very ugly candle of the um, January of last year, exactly a year ago, the high was 249, the low was 138, and here it is, uh, not even, I, I would say it's kind of, in, yeah, it's in the middle. So it's in the middle of that particular range, and I suspect that that will be the target. The high there will be the target over the next, uh, oh, maybe, I, don't know, I should say six weeks, but I'm going to say over this first quarter into the end of, into the end of March. Next question was about Merck. No, it was actually Pfizer, but I wanted to put them together. So uh, let me just type this in here. So Merck, fantastic company, higher highs and higher lows in all its history. It's just been something you can rely on. Uh, look at the way it has this huge sequence. It usually goes to a peak D or an E, and then it fails. You go all the way back to 2003. I can go further back. I mean, I've followed Merck for ever since, uh, well, for decades. So Merck has been, um, I wonder if I could do that. Yeah, let me just do this right now. This is going to be fascinating. Here's the black background chart. I really miss my black background charts. Uh, I, I use the white because I know people like to print out these various charts, and I print them out as well. But... Look, uh, this is the spy at resistance right here. You can see the chapter wave inside track repellent zone. Although it did cross positive, there's an L that says the 9 went over the 14. Anyway, let's go back to Merck. So look at this Merck. Oh, that's the daily chart. It doesn't matter. I want to change it. So this is the, the Merck has just gone to a cell and the daily, that's the 9 under the 14 period moving average. I want you to change this to a monthly. So here we go, monthly chart. Now look at this. Here's Merck. There were very brief periods since since 2010, January, when it was in the 30, 34 to 39 area. Look how many brief sell signals there were where the nine went under the 14, just for like two months, but mostly it's green. Two months, mostly it's green. One month, I think, mostly it's green. Three months and most of it's green. Isn't that interesting? I'll be right back. That's what's happened. Tiger Dickness is our early edition futures of the Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks, so going back to this black background chart, you can see, let me just expand that. This is the PPA, which is the uh, Investor Aerospace and um, Defense uh, Portfolio. And look at how it's holding so nicely. But if you look at uh, the PPH, it has a slightly different uh, characteristic. It did make a high. It's still green. In other words, the line period moving average. But if you look at the individual stocks, look at Merck, acting very well. It's one of the leaders in the group. If you look at Pfizer, that had a huge red candle. This is a monthly chart. Big red candle for January. January is only halfway in. We just started the second half of January. So we're watching this very closely. If you look at Moderna, MRNA, Yes, it's got a much shorter lifespan. That's still very pink. In other words, the nines is much, much um, weaker than the uh, underneath the 14 period moving average. The MACD hasn't crossed positive. The CAS has had a really nice rally. Look at the on balance volume. I'm kind of impressed with that. And it says that uh, big money is coming into this and supporting it and looking out, just like Michael is, at the longer term. So, yes, I do like it. Uh, that doesn't mean to say on a very short-term basis it can't be vulnerable, but I am saying to you uh, within the context of uh, the different chart patterns that we look at, this one is saying it's within, how can I put this, mRNA, let's just go through this again, that within the context of the characteristics that I look for, Yes, it made a lower low on this low in the H pattern, but within two bars, it was already back above the left side low, in this case, the low of uh, June of 115.61. The last low was 115.03, uh, just a tad lower. How many times have we seen this uh, where uh, bottoms are retested almost to the penny? And now this is a single leg A to the upside, but look. The nine is getting closer and closer. There's a monthly chart closer to turning up. So I would say if it can, in the next, uh, if it can get into this this ugly candle of a year ago, January of 2022, has a high of 249.42 and a low of 138.17. I think that this is, this is a good way to play this very choppy 
uh, market that we're in right now and rotating market. Now, talking about rotation, I told my subscribers to my opening call that I would go through the IWM, the Russell 2000, uh, this morning. So, look, there's a, there's a technique that I developed oh, a long time when I used to hand chart. I used to do this where I drew in channels and trend lines. That's just it was the major thing that I did. Plus, I, I started to learn about this Chapman wave, which I call the seven wave four, meaning that prices in a buy mode should go to a D at least. And then I found out that when I found out when Fidelity had become my first uh, big client back in 1987 in the summer, and they were put me on trial. And then they said, "Okay, in August, uh, you're on." And then I got this uh, signal that said. I've got a PD in my hand drawing chart, and all I did was it was the closing price. I only did it on closing prices for the major uh, indices, like I had done it for the Nike, which gave me a, a, a really good sell signal back in 19. Was it the, the, the long the long weekend, New Year's weekend, 1979, going to 80? I think that's when it was. Um, and then I found out, you know, you really can go to an E and even an F. I didn't know about G's, but E and F. So I uh, I said to um, Early, I think it was the third week of August of 1987. I said, on my hot, I had a hotline. They used to call a hotline. I said, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little cautious here. We've got a D. Uh, you know, I know you don't quite know what the D means, but D means be very careful. And I think 27, 38. I don't remember the exact number. I said, but I think we can go a little higher. Then I got that uh, sell signal. And I said, okay, now we're in a cell. We're about to have a very sharp decline. I had no, no idea whatsoever it would be like it was. But while we're in a, in a cell mode for most of that period. So this is very interesting. IWM, this is the channel line right here. This is the inside track repellent zone. And it's gone above it for last week. This week, it's still above it, but it's kind of testing it. But if you have a look, look at this. The S&P X, I don't want to go back to the black background chart. We can do it right here. The S&P went right to the border of the green line and now it's under it's above the nine period moving average if i go to this is the reason why i like to do the e mini continuous contract even though sometimes the prices are way off but the patterns everything's the same except the price sometimes can change right now it's exactly the same as the e mini march e mini at minus 33 at 39.12 had that peak d at the top i haven't yet put the down arrow i needed to wait for today to conclude but look at this chap we've inside track repellent zone it's still acting as a repellent zone, even though very briefly it became a propulsion for a move above it. But look at that. Uh, you can't you can't uh, make up things. This is the way it is. This is the way it looks. Let me just extend it. There it is. So we're right in. This is really important. This is the E-mini. Let's go back to, we can go to RTY. No, I don't want to go there. I want to go to the IWM again. This is the cash index from yesterday. It's actually down at the 182 level. So it's gone back inside. But look, the nine period actually crossed over the, to positive into the 14 where we have the whole week to go, meaning all the way through to Friday at 4 o'clock, tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Do you see whether or not this can hold in the L uh, if everything starts to decline? all the way through the day and into early tomorrow, no matter what happens at the end of tomorrow, that'll say, whoa, there's a chance that this L could change back to an S, meaning uh, it, it goes negative. But so far, this is a positive sign. And if I'm looking at rotation, well, maybe I'll just keep that up and go to the SMHs. Look, the SMHs also, uh, it's a little different uh, line. I, this is a secondary line. It's really way above the initial inside track repellent zone. But then I always like to do another one from maybe a peak on the left side that looks important. Now it's visual. Now this is mathematically, you're not going to be able to do this. This is all, all visual. And now what we've got is that if I took that trend line from that peak B minus right there back in August at the August high, you can see it's been pushing above the line and below the line, now above the line. And that's the, the semiconductors. And it did go to a leg E. This is the one index uh, that I look at or sector that I look at that actually extended leg D or E yesterday and has not made a peak yet. Now it's down 266 at 233.05, meaning pre-market with an hour and five minutes to go that uh, there's a real good chance we're going to get our peak E. But look how technically strong it is. Look at the uh, MACD so strong. Look at the uh, nine period exponential moving average so strong with the price way above it and the 200p moving average of 220. So I can't just throw in the towel and say, oh my God, this is it. We're going down. A 
little drink of uh, tea there. But I, I can say that the semiconductors invariably lead us up and invariably lead us down. And so far, they've been stellar. They've been, look, the, the high that was made right here in December the 15th, 13th at uh, 234.59. Yesterday's high was 231.05. Yes, a little bit under it, already in leg E. Remember, I don't like peaks D. E or F to be made way under the previous high. That usually is a sign that says, that's what I was saying to subscribers over the last couple of days. The Dow has been lagging. Will it drag the others down or will the others drag the, 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 uh, hold the, that the Dow hold okay? But that Goldman Sachs travelers sell off uh, two, uh, two days ago, that was serious stuff. That, that, that means that the market was vulnerable to another decline. So the that's why the Dow is acting on a chart basis worse. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks, we're back. Just before we go into anything else, uh, we've got, what is it, time now is uh, 8.29, so within another few seconds, probably we've got some economic news. Could be a big spike. Actually, let's do this right now, just for fun. So we've got ourselves a leg D in the one-minute chart of the E-mini. Remember, the objective is always to get you to a D. And look at this. It goes to a D, and what happens at a D? Other things can happen. Well, it, it, it spiked up. And one minute later, it plummets down. The, the E-mini is now down 36 at 39.10. However, it's a leg F in the 10-minute chart. I want to watch this closely because you can see on this two-minute chart right here, Chapmave automated uh, support and resistance levels. Look at the cluster of support in the 39.10 area. So let's see if that's going to hold as a springboard. You can go lower, but it's the whole candle that we want to look at. That's a, this is a two-minute chart. And look at all the resistance of the 39.13 level. However, it did go to 39.16, plummet immediately down to 39.08. So let me let me talk about that because I had a bit – I don't mind talking about things that go wrong. It's enough when we talk about things that go right. 
So in the meantime, what I, I wanted to point out is um, while we're there, and I'm going to go back to what I was looking at just in a short while, um, and that was looking at the SMHs, which had held well, and so far the SMHs are down about almost uh, three points, about uh, over two points. So we, I'll come back to that in a moment. But what I wanted to show you is this. We had a position that I wanted yesterday. It's been on our, my list for quite a while. Um, the chart that just came up here, because in the den, uh, docu, uh, S&P says, docu hit that uh, uh, peak D, a uh, leg D in the, in the morning yesterday. Yep, that's what we were looking at. And it's fascinating that you can go from 61.60 on the 14th of uh, December down to the uh, 52 area, 51, 52 area, and then come back in a peak A, peak B, peak C, and a leg D. And what does it do? Remember, what was the high? That was The high was 61.60, and the high yesterday was? 61.27. Unbelievable how you get these little double tops um, and then you start to see a pullback or a rally. So anyway, go back to what we were looking at here. Of course, I've moved away about five steps. Let me see what I can do. Oh, yeah, so we were looking at the SMHs and the SMHs are suggesting that uh, they've been holding very well. They can pull back here, but 220 is the 200 period exponential moving average. They're still quite a way above that right now. Early uh, pre market, they're down to 20, 223.05, down 266. And I was mentioning to you that within the E mini, the two minute chart says there's a ton of support. And now another support level of 3907 has kicked in. So you've got all these support levels. Can that hold? Is it possible that whatever the news is, I don't know what the news was at 8.30 with the, um, I can't remember what was supposed to come out today. Um, but an economic uh, report came out and that's what, that was that big uh, pullback. And now we're going to see, is this going to be the start of at least some base building on the session to be able to say uh, it's not yet ready for prime time, but it's attempting the E-mini, let's say in the, above 3,900, it's attempting to form some kind of a, a, a support level on the very near-term charts. Uh, now we can now we can start looking at other things that I wanted to do. So the questions came up about the the, the uh, pharmaceuticals. Well, the pharmaceuticals have a slightly different chart to the IBB, and the IBB, which is the um, IBB Nasdaq Biotech ETF. Just look at this. I, I'm I didn't know this is what I was going to pull up on you. I, I wanted to pull up the IBB at some point uh, during this morning session. This is the pre-open session that will be recorded and replayed again. So that's peak A, peak B minus right there because it failed to make a new high. comes down to a lower low and it goes down to a B. No, that's I, it's a penny difference. I just need to make sure that I'm not missing it. So the low on the 6th of December was 132.24. And on the 12th was 132.25. Yeah, I knew it was a penny, but I didn't know if it was below or above. I'm usually good at the eye business, but uh, this is a little a little difficult to see. B, trough C, and then it goes to what? Peak A. What's the objective of the Chapman Wave buy signal to buy mode? Is to get you to a D, a leg D, which maybe makes a peak D, and then you've got to assess and see what's happening. Well, lo and behold, remember I was talking about the double tops just a moment ago? How about this? The IBB on the 2nd of December goes to 118.74. Yesterday's high was 100 and, whoops, did I say that incorrectly? On the 2nd of December goes to 138.74. I think that's what I said. What was the high yesterday? 138.13. You can't make these things up. Is that not just absolutely amazing? In a leg D, goes back to that previous peak E. Uh, it's a little in a little quicker time frame, and yet within that context, it goes right to the door, but cannot get through. And in the weekly chart, uh, it goes that would be a little higher. That that peak was in uh, no, 138.74 there as well. Unbelievable. Now what I like to do, I should wait for the whole week to finish, but I'll show you what I'm going to be looking at. Look at the vertical line here. The MACD stochastic, everything was fantastic when it was making that leg D and then a peak D. And look, this hasn't finished the bar because we could still make another high by tomorrow. Therefore, it would continue this leg to the upside, but I'm looking at it right now. The MACD is still very good, although the histogram is weakening. 
The stochastic's now under 80% at 77, and the on-balance volume is weak. But look how strong the 9 is over the 14. And that's why I say to you, use your techniques, but know what you're using. You know what's leading, what's lagging in terms of your indicators. And if you look at this closely, you'll see that it's not giving you any kind of a sell signal or anything. It's saying that so far, there's a little bit of weak. Look at the daily chart. The, the daily chart, the MACD is way weaker than it was way back there. The stochastic, though, is way up at 92% and holding flat. That's a very good sign so far. So this is the way I like to look at it. So I don't want to be overlooking something that is very important, and that is the 9 is way above the 14, even though the MACD is starting to weaken a little bit. It's still strong, but it's weakening a little bit, and the stochastic has gone under 80%. So I'm watching the IBB because I want to see which sectors in this particular sell-off are holding really well. So I want to mention the XLP. XLP is mm. XLP is the S&P Select Consumer Staple Spider Fund. I don't know where I heard it, but someone was talking about the S&P. I think it was on a Bloomberg. I don't remember where it was. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. I looked at the X XLP the other day, and they said the the, the S&P. Did I even write it down? The S&P. Versus, I, I remember actually writing it. I'm, always, I'm very visual, so I remember actually writing it. Of course, now I've got to find out where did I put it. Something about the XLP is the one that's doing really well and should continue to do well. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying, wait a minute. I've got this as kind of stalling here, not not breaking down, but I've got it as an alternate count. I've got it as a PG in the uh, uh, daily chart with a high in the 77s. It's now at 72 under the... Uh, the, the nine period moving average has been weak uh, for some time now. It's, it's closed yesterday under the 200 period moving average. The weekly chart is way under the 14 moving average. The monthly chart is still pretty good. But this is just telling me that that rotation that you, you expect at this particular phase when the market is so haphazard, um, you would expect that the, the staples would be the place to go to, like a Procter & Gamble. Well, Procter & Gamble is the same sort of pattern. There's your peak D uh, with, a, with a fantastic triple top. Look at this. It's just uncanny how these things happen at bottoms. I'll talk about the dollar in a moment. Look at this. Here's the, um, on the 14th, 154.44 Procter & Gamble. That's on the 14th. On the 28th of December, 154.65, slightly higher for a peak D. Wait a minute. It retests at 154. Is that a zero, zero there? Why am I not, why am I not seeing it so well? 154.80. So 144.80 goes slightly higher. Yes, yeah, so that went to an E. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So uh, I've got to thank Jay. You know, the DIN is such a fantastic medium. Folks, we got Tiger, we, Tiger uh, TFNN. We've got this thing called the DIN. It's just, they call it a chat room, but this is not, nobody's chatting away. We're talking about stocks, talking about very important things. And JB mentioned that uh, there was a high a trend reading. And I, for some reason, I was so busy with so many other things yesterday. Uh, and then last night, again, with looking at the charts and looking at what I wanted to change some of the stops in our positions, etc., that I completely forgot about the trend gauge. And yes, it was very high. And that says at any point, be careful that because you could get a very sudden. Uh, 11 to even 15 point gain in the S&P. I'm saying you expect that, but you got to know where it's coming from and you also got to monitor it because it's holding the gain. It just says, be careful, be ready for a sudden pop because you can't just short everything at this particular point. Now you've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, yes, it's a vulnerable market. So anyway, I'm looking at talking about vulnerable market. Look at P&G. So it made this three times hit uh, area in the 154s. Uh, that was a peak E. Now it's pulling back sharply. I mean, it's pulling back 200 period moving average of 144. It's at 146. But a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C after a big move up from 122 and then stalling the 144s like this. It's just be real careful. This is where you get very quick peaks uh, within one bar rest and the next bar, even though it's a weekly, makes a high and then a rest and another high. It says be careful because you could not a sell, major sell signal, but it says be careful you could get quite a sharp drop. And that's what we've got. But PG in the monthly chart is holding a little bit better, but that is a defensive stock. HSY was mentioned in the den. Hershey's, uh, it's the same sort of thing. Look at this. What do we, what do we expect in the Chapman Bay methodology? A buy signal should take you to at least a D. D is where other things can happen. So let me go back and, and finish up the chart that I hadn't concluded in the HSY. It's a stock that I've, I've followed. And I always forget to, to actually get people in because it always has a very decent a very decent rally. And then you've got to be careful because it also has very big pullbacks. But look at this. It went to a peak D. Where did it go to the – I can't believe this. Where did it go to the peak D? Well, in uh, October the 31st, it goes to 241.51, peak E. Plummets below the 200-period moving average all the way to the 212 area. And then it rallies to where? 240. 2.64. What was the high back in October? 241.45. Ah, I mean, you can't make this up. It's just unbelievable how these double tops and double balls. Now, and now I need to go to. Uh, so this is in the defensive area, defense XLP. I think Hershey's is in it. Should be Hershey's company, chocolate and candy. All right. What we're looking at here is we're going to go to the dollar. I think I want to go to the weekly chart for the dollar. So let me open this up nicely. So. I did, have I, I've done, I, oh, I did that in the 
Oh, I didn't do the update today, but I, I can't. Sh I can't even remember if I did all these different things. So look, here's Hershey's. I'm just opening. This is the chart I'm going to use. So that's going to disappear in a minute before it does. Look at this trend line. Trend lines are so important. Look, if you take the low that was made back in April or May, it was uh, May the week, May, May the week of the twentieth, two or one point forty two, and then it retested at two or one point sixty three, slightly higher. But because of this high low that was made. The week of the 11th of November, 2.11.49. I'm using that as my trend line. Well, the trend line says at 2, 2.14s, it better hold 2.14s. Otherwise, it can go quite a bit lower because that's your, look, I can make it right now. The chapter wave inside track propellant zone. Is it going to become a repellent zone? Is today a day where you so between today and Tuesday coming up, next few days, we start to see some other things happen in the market as the selling is so selective that the stock, the indexes that we're holding, like the IWM, actually show that they have concerted effort to try to hold support. Well, let's go to the dollar, DXY. The dollar right now, 101.30. Let me just see. This is, this doesn't get smoothed out. No. 101.30 101 was the low the week of the 3rd of June in 2022. Screams up to 114.78. We've taken a little bit so far. Our long position was started in 2018. But this is serious because look what happened. We came down yesterday to a low of 101.53. Within 30 cents of that previous high from six, seven months ago. Isn't that incredible how it works that way after going so high? Well, this makes it really important because if in the monthly chart, the stochastics are 3.71. That is so pathetic. That's like saying it's at 97, and that's fantastic. Hold the longs because we might be getting closer to some kind of a, a top, but it hasn't happened yet. And as long as it's flat and holding in the 95 to 97 area, that's fantastic. You are getting a little bit overboard, but not any any signals. Well, in this case, it's the opposite. You're down at 371 and flat. There are no signs yet in the monthly chart that the dollar has the, enough strength to get from 102 right now, 102.23, up into the 110, 111 area. It doesn't say it can't rally at some point to the pink nine period moving average 104 or the or the black 14 period moving average of 105. But in that particular context, and remember yesterday I said, I have no choice. I'm calling this an alternate count, F slash C, in the dollar index. Although the UUP is, is the beneficiary, it is the subordinate to the dollar index, which is the key. The UUP, which is a trading vehicle, has actually made, um, I did call that an F slash C some time ago. And I don't know why I didn't call that same thing in the uh, in the dollar. And that just says, now you've got to be very careful. You've made your peak E in the uh, weekly chart. Uh, we're in from the 23s. It's run all the way to the 30s. And now it's coming back. I uh, have taken a little bits off. But I'm, I'm watching this very closely. Okay. Look at the EUR USD. So in this particular instance, it ran... Uh, is this going to be one? You remember I talk about a particular technique that I used, and I don't know if you can use it. One point, oh, I hate it when you've got so many digits. Uh, 1.0867. 1 1.8681. So that was higher. Good. Phew. And that was higher to 1.08742. So this is actually a G slash the G slash yeah this is a G slash B in the euro in other words there's nothing here that's wrong but I need to be a little careful to say that could be a G this could be that camel hump where you make a little uh, 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 the MACD kind of bounces with the stochastic and the stochastic goes over 81 and very quickly goes under 81 so this is going to okay, now I can talk about the market this is going to become a much broader sell-off if a number of things happen. So one at a time. The euro, if the euro starts to break and goes below 1.08, it's at 1.0, sorry, 1.06. I mean, 1.061, it's at 1.080. Right now, that's going to suggest it's going to become a peak in the weekly chart 
and we could have a digestive phase. All the technicals are very strong. So it would just be a digestive phase, and that would correspond to the USDJPY, which is the uh, yen currency pair, going to alternate count. Uh, this is A, B, E slash C, F slash D. Uh, that shouldn't have been a G. So that would be an alternate count E, right here. E in the trough, E in the in the bottom. Um, oh, I've got a left side, right side match as well. So let's just look at that. I'll be back. We've got a lot to talk about in a few minutes remaining. I'll be back. That was a chat from early edition. Now we just come to 77. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, so there it goes. So it's really important. You remember I was talking about that a massive number of, of support levels that was taken out and then uh, went above, and then the resistance levels. And now we've got 39.18 to 39.17 as resistance. Now, let me just do this quickly because the USD, JPY, that's the yen. We're going to be watching that low that was made. It was a slightly lower low at 127. Just going to be watching that. Going to be watching to see if the, if what the dollar does and what gold does over the next couple of days. I'll talk about it a lot more tomorrow in my show. This is a recorded show early on, eight to nine. It'll be played again at ten. So at uh, at twenty minutes past ten, where my show would normally be be alive, it'll be live tomorrow. If the E mini, I, I prefer not to have it just straight off the low this morning, but I'd like to see another scary retest of the 39.12 to 39.10 area. Don't want to break that. And then a decent rally. And if at any point between 10.20 this morning, I'm going to make it 10.40. 10.40, 22, 11 Eastern time to 12.15, that's just afternoon. The E-mini is even able just once to touch the 39.32 level. 
that's going to be important. If it touches 30, 39, 32, and then doesn't take out 39.27 as support, but starts to rally towards like uh, 2.20 this afternoon, it's holding, and the Dow has come back from minus, uh, and Dow needs now to perform. If the Dow can come back to just a minus 90 by about uh, 130 to 250, that's going to be saying, okay, we, we're trying to form some kind of a base here. But if we take out today's lows, the, the future's lows, at any point, you've got to be really careful. There's not a time to be too – that's the reason why we've raised cash to gain. We've raised stops on our positions. We did get stopped out of one position yesterday for a very small loss on a single-digit stock. That's quite, I'm quite proud of that. Only a 2.3% loss. Uh, it usually, it has to be more because it's such a low price, but we managed to get it. It did exactly the opposite of what I wanted. It, it didn't pull back and then rally to the target we had of – uh, the target that we had on the upside of resistance, it went to the resistance and then pulled back. So we bought it way off the high, but it still got stopped out. I'm, I'm looking at that one. We might get back in at some point. So this is what we've got for today. A very important session. I want to see the semiconductors get back some of the losses that they're making early in the morning. I want to see them start to lead a little bit more with the IWM.